Thank you for sharing. Okay, so take a moment and uh, set an intention for our time together. So it could be meet someone new. It could be be 100% present, which is what I like to do. Don't let my mind wander. Uh, it could be um, learn something new, but what, whatever. Just uh, you had a thought in, in deciding to be here today. So what was what was that that thought that hope perhaps? And so let's say a prayer. <clears throat> Most amazing spirit, life, love, joy, all that you are in us and all around us. We give thanks for this time, knowing that it is fruitful and a blessing to all. And so with that thought, we are open and receptive, Lord, to your spirit, the living spirit of truth, who now guides us and leads us in this time, revealing all that needs to be revealed to each one today. We give thanks and praise and know it's unfolding in perfect divine order. And so it is. And we all say, Amen. Amen. So um, <clears throat> just so that we kind of get the names, um, would you say your first name in one of your happy places? Like my happy, one of my happy places is on the dance floor. <laughs> so your yeah. name in one of your happy places. Oh, Joe. And that's one of my happy places too, dance wow. floor. Thank, thank you. I'm Arlene, and I don't want to go my happy place. Oh, Arlene. <laughs> casino. The casino. <laughs> what is this? I love it. And my name is Sue. And my happy place is in my house. Oh, I know. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, I'm Linda. My happy place is outdoors. Mm. Margie, and any place I can go for a walk in the shade. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Marla, and my new happy place is on my couch with my new puppy that I've had a few days. Oh, <laughs> oh how lovely. What did you get? A Yorkie. Uh, a Yorkie. Uh, a girl or a boy? A little girl. And Chloe. what's you? Chloe? No, no. <laughs> Well, we won't confuse it, Chloe, Cleo. <laughs> oh, what color? Brown and black. Oh, how cute. <laughs> yeah. Cassie and my garden in Arizona and my garden in Colorado. Ah, thank you, Cassie. Diane and just about any place in nature. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I am Dee and my happy place is hiking in the mountain. Ah, thank you. I'm standing. In the mountains, they the mountains. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm Billy, and I my happy place is in the mountains too. <laughs> Good thing. Good thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Joy, and I think my happy place is probably I, I love the water and the beach. Uh, so I think I yeah that would be it. Great, thank you. That's it. I think my real happy place though is laying in bed reading. I just that's just <laughs> comfortable. Oh, kind of I know. I'm just laying there reading. I love that. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. <laughs> I forgot to say my name. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I stole. I was so much in your happy oh, place yeah, I didn't know. I know, and I think I I think that probably might be Reverend Billy's. <laughs> it's not the other Billy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> she can't help me. <laughs> so I thought I would do just a you know really really brief intro. Um, you probably already know. Have any of you started reading the book? Yeah. Okay, a couple of you. So you know it deals with one of those things that most people turn and run from, which is what? Yeah. 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 We don't want to talk about it. We don't want to think about it. But I love the the contention in this book, which is thinking about it helps us live better now. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a real important distinction to make as we take a look at the five invitations. There are probably a lot more invitations, or we could, you know, get a lot of things under each of those five. But keeping it simple, five invitations. Uh, another another book 
that deals with this subject that's not new. Well, his, his book isn't all that new either anymore, but uh, Wayne, Wayne Muller wrote a book, How Then Shall We Live? Knowing We Will Die is, you know, kind of the byline there. And it's, and it's the same thing, you know, knowing that this is impermanent, what are we going to do to make the best of what we've got? So, worth the exploration. So are we ready to launch here? Yes. Any questions or comments before we begin? Okay, remind me at the end to take for every question, okay? Well, I'm going to be in charge of reminding you. What about us online? Oh. I so am sorry, yike. Okay, your name and your happy place. I'm Eileen and my happy place is singing and listening to music. Uh -huh. Judy. And she's got a great voice too. Mm -hmm. uh, Mary. Hey, what good morning. Um, one of my happy places is a library. So I'm gonna say library today. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, Kathy. After I'm done, you need to ask Judy because you skipped her, but um, I'm Kathy and Judy is there with Eileen. Um, one of my happy places is nature, anywhere in nature. Great. Judy, there you are. Here I am. Um, my happy place is uh, in the house and my art room. <laughs> uh, Judy's a great place. Mm -hmm. And Darlene, your name and your happy place. <laughs> my, my name? Yeah. Oh, I'm Darlene Hubbard. <laughs> I'm late because I have to open heart crack. <laughs> I am, I am most one of your happy places. Um, gosh, my happy. Don't make me tell you. <sighs> I guess it's being with bars. <laughs> no, no kidding. <laughs> okay, have we got everybody? Great. So <laughs> here we are. The first invitation is don't wait. So I have taken some uh, quotes out of the book and have some questions about it. Uh, so, <coughs> so the first one, uh, would you read that first? The first quote right here. Yes, life is a constant dialogue with the soul of the world and it all events are doorways. Okay. Life is a constant dialogue with the soul of the world. That's pretty deep. Yeah. What is it? The soul of the world. I think this whole book is deep. <laughs> the whole book is deep. <laughs> so far. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the soul of the world. I, I, what do you think it is? What is our soul? When we when we talk about our soul, what do you think it is? Maybe that would help us with the soul of the world. I, I think the all events are doorways is out taking our soul to the next level. Great. So I think even even this event of being in this class with this book is an event is a doorway yeah. to where we're headed. Well said. Who else? Anybody else want to comment on that? The, your soul or the soul of the world or doorways? All events being doorways. Thanks, Joe. All events. Eileen had her hand up. Thank you. I've got to keep looking at the screen. Sorry, Eileen. Go ahead. I think our soul is our connection to everyone and to uh, God. Anyone else? Well, so my my first question is, <clears throat> what makes life a dialogue in this way? Darlene? Well, everything that we think and say and do affects <coughs> those things beyond us. It's like we're all a vibration. And since vibrations go out to everyone, so 
Great. So we have to be careful about what we're thinking and how we're acting. Yes, yeah. because it impacts. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the exact quote, but the, I read a quote a long time ago, and this is the essence of it, I think, that when a butterfly flaps its wings, it's felt around the world. Mm -hmm. Because our thoughts are non-local. You know, all that we do is is an expression of energy and it impacts all the energy around us. So anybody else, what makes life a dialogue in this way? Any other perspectives? Yes, I think that life is always happening through us. Yeah. Right. So there's mirrors all around us giving us feedback and we're in constant dialogue with ourselves and others. And we think it's happening out there, but we're such we're co-creators with everything happening. Yes. Right. And opportunities for growth is always around us, even if it's mass and adversity. Great. Awesome. Welcome. Well, thank you. I'm sorry I'm to be late. Ready. Don't worry. Your name? Oh, I'm John. Hi, John. Hi. Welcome. Reverend Sharon, right? That's me. Okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> so uh, this is the five invitations. You knew that, right? I, I, I did. I did. I even, I even got the book. <laughs> Okay. I figured that was a sixth invitation. <laughs> so we're on the first invitation, don't wait. Right. Don't wait. And uh, so the second thing I would like you to consider and reflect on out loud is think of an event that was a doorway for you. As Chris was saying, Chris said, you know, our events can be seen in this <coughs> class as an event be seen as a doorway, which we can go through or not, a doorway to a higher state of consciousness or a higher consciousness or new opportunities, you know, a doorway opens to us. So think of an event that was a doorway for you. Okay, I'm gonna have coffee passed around <laughs> or a little sugar. <laughs> Yes, I will say uh, for me, it was, I came into this incarnation with a certain amount of information, I guess, mm -hmm. but um, when I went over to Rome and went into the catacombs, mm -hmm. for some reason, it just really, really affected me. That's and what way. it really started me on my spiritual journey. Okay. Something happened there. Mm -hmm. You saw a doorway and you walked through it. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm, I saw Margie's hand. Mine was the obvious. Today I walked into the door right over here in the other building. That was life changing for me. Oh, great. Great. And Kathy, was your hand? Yeah. I, I'm not sure if I can explain how this fits with that, but um, always as a child, I was very attracted to any Indian flute music, any Native American music. And now I get to work on the Rosebud Reservation um, and help teach the kids to read there and work with the teachers more. But um, that's been a huge, life-changing, important. I, I get way more than I give. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that has been a huge doorway to me. Great. And so those of you who have comment, would, commented, would you say that going through that doorway expanded your perception and perspective of life in the world and you and <coughs> definitely. Who else? Anybody else? Yes, the end. I'm struck with the metaphor. And by the way, I don't mean to be antisocial, but I have to travel soon. So take care. Um, a doorway to me represents mystery, going into the next mystery. So um, I have so many events in my life that have been doorways. And um, I'm actually taking another class with Frank, A Year to Live. And he expresses uh, a doorway, the doorway to death. So I think that's why, you know, um, his book, you know, talks about that yeah over and over again what a doorway that is to our next journey mm -hmm. yes yeah. and i i like what you um suggested about the mystery of it 
So how many of you have ever walked into the unknown? You made a decision, but you didn't know <laughs> what was on the other side of the decision. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. 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 No. Eileen, Eileen has something to say. Who? Eileen. Oh, Eileen. Okay, I thought she said Arlene. Come on, Eileen. Um, an event that was a doorway for me was when I left Utah and came to Arizona and began doing spiritual seminars with Judy. It totally opened a whole new perspective on life for me and my spiritual journey. Great. Thank you. Anybody else? Mary, are you still with us? I'll give you one. Thank you, John. I'm, I'm still with you. And uh, well, I, I think this is a doorway. It was a, a major event in my life. It happened right here last Thursday because at this facility, you guys host an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. And I was there. And, and this, you know, mostly it's a bunch of very senior citizens that are in this meeting. And a young girl walked in and she said, I've been sober 30 days, but I've been only been to one meeting. I've been isolated a lot. Yeah. And, and I felt the group consciousness in that meeting wasn't really what that girl needed. She needed people that were in the trenches and the front lines. And I was going to another AA meeting that was really, I thought, much more uh, able to cope with her situation. So the Holy Spirit, I, I look at what's going on in my head is battle between ego and Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit clearly came to me and said, you have to do this right now. You have to go to that girl. And it possessed me. I, I you know, and tell her about this meeting and get and encourage her as much as you can to go to that meeting because she needs that help that, that this that this group cannot deliver. And anyway, she she said yes. I took her to that meeting, and that meeting was as good as this whole community can give her to help her in her situation. And for me, that was a doorway where. I, I was totally engulfed. I surrendered to the Holy Spirit and to exactly what I needed to do at that very moment in time. And I, yeah, I mean, that was, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I'm, I'm pretty laid back. I'm pretty careful about uh, things that I do. And I, I like to be as risk averse as possible, like everybody else. But, but I knew what I had to do in that moment to help that girl the most that she could be helped. And wow. yeah, and that, that, I was, that was a doorway. Okay. I get that. Right. Walking and into the, the facility made it happen. Okay. Holy <laughs> well. Right. Holy well. <laughs> okay. Um, so, do you want to say anything else about the soul of the world or soul before I move on? Anyone want more on that? Okay. Off we go then. Uh, so, Dee, would you can you read, see this chart? Sure. Okay, would you read it for us? Sure. We cannot be truly alive without maintaining an awareness of death. Why is that? When you well consider when you have been sort of moving from one task to another, or um, not really living in the present moment. Uh, how truly alive do you feel? So, as this says, we can't be truly alive without maintaining an awareness of death, not like morbidly. Mm -hmm. That's but what, would it, what does it feel like and what are you doing when you maintain an awareness of death? You're taking care of business. I'm sorry? You're taking care of business. You're doing, you You know, if we know death can happen the minute we walk out that door and get in that pickup, and as you always say, get on I-10, um, then we live the right way because we don't have, we don't know what's coming up. And we don't know if we get tomorrow to say sorry, I love you, all those things. Mm -hmm. So it makes us live better and be truly alive to know that this could be gone in a minute and We'll have some regrets if we didn't take care of business. Mm -hmm. Good. 
if I could put that a slightly different way, I think you're recognizing the full circle and comprehension of the cycle of life mm -hmm. and death is part of that. Yeah. And just tend to avoid that or say it's not, you know, not regular, and you're, you're not comprehending the cycle of your earthly life. Great. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Eileen, Mary? No. Is it kind of, and I have a question here because living, knowing you're going to die, and we are, mm -hmm. and that, but is that, is that more of it to live, to have that death in your mind all the time when you're living? I don't think if it makes you do better things. I mean, if it makes you go, oh, we're all screwed, we're all going to die. Yeah, so, right. So I might as well just be a creep and treat oh, people bad. Yeah. But I think if it makes you do the opposite, we're all going to die and could any minute. Let's mm -hmm. do the right thing. So I think it all depends on how you see everything. It's your attitude, I think. Mm -hmm. your attitude. I think so, so too. I do too. Yeah, I do too. I think you're know. truly alive. You live, I think you do live fuller mm -hmm. knowing you're going to die. Right. But do I want to think that all the time? No. You know? <laughs> Let me go to Diane. Well, the class I'm in is a year to live with, with Frank and, and two other uh, people. And a lot of the people, it's 500 people from across the world. A lot of the people um, have prognosis. So they are dying very shortly. Some of the rest of us are just dealing with aging. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, it's been interesting to listen to the people. They, they are not morbid. I think, um, mm -hmm. by and large, it's pulling us all to that place of acceptance of impermanence and also living more fully. Uh, for me, mm -hmm. it's been about not putting off some stuff. Mm -hmm. I've been putting off. I don't know if, any, if anybody else is a procrastinator, but <laughs> that's one of my biggest problems. And so... I don't think so, Chris. I, 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 because I've watched other people, mm -hmm. and that was an initial thought for me. I actually signed up for this student wanted to do it with me, and I thought, I don't want. This is not one of my favorite books of his, Stephen Levine. But I thought, okay, if my sister wants to do it. I'll sign up with her. And uh, I thought, well, this is going to make me depressed. <laughs> and I already run to the more serious side of life, so I thought, oh God, I not do this. But if anything, it's been a, just a lovely relieving experience of like you said thinking about how you know even death can feel morbid i mean it's such a strange thing we live and then we die how weird is that <laughs> you know joke thank you Diane. i think that um Love when i think it. when i think that um that you know i don't have that long to live i I want to grow more because I want to be better in my next life. That's what I, that's the way I know. <laughs> that's a good friend. But still on the dance floor. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yes. I was raised to be very afraid of death. That was a that was uh, something that was held over in my, you know, well, this and this and this. And so death was a horrible thing and it was a punishment. And this is what's going to happen to you. So right now, I am between like, mm, you know, I, I this is still there because it was still ingrained, and this is all very new to me, fairly new to me that this this concept. So I'm in this. I don't know about this. You know, I, I'm in that. I'm in kind of that place right now. I get it intellectually. You know, okay, this sounds really good. But mm, I don't know. So I'm, that's where I'm at. This would be good, great if it's true. I'm at, okay, if this is true, this could be wonderful. But I am not really convinced. I mean, I am and I want to be. So I'm in that, I'm in that, wherever. If you know, wait, Joy, that reminds me of my mother <laughs> and just constantly tells me when I die, I'll be like that rock over there and it's over. Yeah. And my mom raised me. And it wasn't her fault. I took that on. No, that's what they. And it's taken me, you know, twenty years in this kind of work to embrace death, and that's made me way more comfortable with life mm -hmm. because Amen. I don't feel this panic that it's all over when you die. Yeah. It's done. Yeah. I have this, and I'm like Joe. I want to do a great job so that next time it's not quite so hard. As this <laughs> I 
love to that, but I have this knowing now, and it took 20 years to get that to a well, trial. Yeah, 20 <laughs> that I can die tomorrow. <laughs> well, you want to. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah, and and I I agree with you, and it, it makes sense. And uh, I actually, uh, boy, I've actually had um, a situation I mean, where I have gone into two other past lives that I've lived. I'm, I didn't mean to do it. To, I wasn't there for that reason, but that's what happened. And uh, so it's like, well, if I had that, then this I must be coming back. But then, now, then that set up a whole lot of other questions. Well, do I get to choose? Do I get to pick my parents' time? Can I be smarter? Can I, can, you know, I want all these questions, which of course you can't answer, I don't think. You can't answer, no. No. So anyway, I, I'm here. But I appreciate that because, yeah, it's a, it's a terrible way. But if you don't know any better, if that's what your family's, you know. Mm -hmm. Not when you're young like that, you don't know it, I mean, or who to ask, or who didn't go to church. So, you know, it, it's thank you, thank you, Dee. Um, so I've always embraced that as part of life, it's been something that, um, to me has really enriched my life as well. And recently, I got married 30 days ago, and we get married later in life, you know, um, you look at the, the relationship differently because there's always you're at the end of your life. We, we joked at our vows, you know, we met the, the last, um, the final quarter, and my husband, who's a bit older than me, will say, well, actually, we met in the last tenth of our But it enriches your life even more because we so appreciate the time we have together because we know it's not that we don't have a whole lifetime together. Mm -hmm. And at our wedding with our immediate family there, we were the oldest, you know, there. <laughs> and it just helps you to celebrate, you know, again, how grateful we are to find each other and to appreciate every moment we have. Because we know that again, we don't have a whole lifetime together. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's kind of interesting, um, you know, that, that journey that we're on together. Huh. Yeah, we'll fuss over who does the dishes at all ever. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I think um, I want to touch for a minute on uh, what you said, Dee, about it helps us appreciate. Yeah. So mm -hmm. as you contemplate, here I am in life and death could be tomorrow or it could be a few years from now it look and see just look inside and see does it increase your appreciation of the people in your life in the now moment yeah yeah it does doesn't it yeah. Yeah. so one of the why is that yeah is is it makes me more appreciative of the life i've been given and perhaps um you know, when I think about me, I think, well, it certainly has awakened and brought to the forefront my desire to maintain good health mm -hmm. on all levels, right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> when you were a teenager, did you think about these things? No, no, no. no. no I was terrified of this. Like joy. As I, I did think about it, and it just felt so desperate to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which now it feels so much more comfortable. Yeah. This isn't all there is. Well, we could also, and this given that, 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 go into, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to throw it out there and you can <laughs> think about it later. <laughs> um, is that fear or reluctance to consider death? Does it have anything to do with what you believe about God? Yes, so everything. Mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, because yeah. he was, I was taught he was vengeful. Mm -hmm. yeah. He could be vengeful. Yeah. You might go to hell. Yeah. yeah, yeah, watch me. Yeah. And then when I asked my mother once, I happened to see a nun, I had no idea because we didn't have Catholics in our town. And I said, well, What is that? Who is that? And she said, That's a nun in your love. I said, how, how did she get to, how did she do that? How did she get to do My mother says to me, well, God will call you. Well, guess what? Every night I got in bed. I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, 
only, I don't want to be one of those. I mean, I live like that, but you know, like I, I think now I, was I never ask any questions because I, I don't know if I didn't want an answer. If I you didn't trust all my parents, I don't know if I trusted my parents mm -hmm. in, inwardly. I don't think it'd be like, yeah, right. You know, so I didn't, I just lived with that. But every night I pull the covers up like God couldn't see me and couldn't come get me and say, I'm not going, I'm not ready, I can't do this. And then I go to the end. So that's why I'm saying this is like, wow, too bad I didn't know that. And I've been waiting for him to call me and very clearly say, Yes, yeah, like yeah, I just every night. Would you answer me now? <laughs> <laughs> Not just this little feeling inside. I want you to stand in front of me in the burning bush and tell me where it is. <laughs> so I'm ready to answer. Okay, so if you get one, you care. <laughs> you too. Me too. What a group. <laughs> uh, Billy, I saw your hand. Oh, well, I actually had a similar experience. As I, growing up in the church, uh, we had a missionary come and they'd gone to some faraway place and they're, you know, sharing their experiences. And I said, Oh God, I don't want to be a missionary, not yet anyway. <laughs> Sunday, maybe, but not right now. <laughs> and that's how it turned out. I mean, I remember that very clearly. And I took a position in a small Hispanic community and I said <laughs> to God, okay, this is my mission. I'm here to serve these people. I didn't have to go to a faraway place. I just had to be, do the best I can right here. And I felt to me like I had, in doing that, I had fulfilled my promise that I would do it later. <laughs> <laughs> well, it all worked out. <laughs> and it was, I mean, it seems to me like that was almost a, provided a doorway yeah. that you went through because you could reflect back and say, okay, this is my mission. Well, I actually knew it in my heart at the beginning, yeah. all the way through. It was very, you know, very clear to me that I was there for a reason. And I had a young, a young man who was a, um, a Mormon. And he'd gone to Columbia and he was working with me. And I said, gee, you didn't have to go that far. <laughs> there's, there's a need right under your nose here. <laughs> but he learned to speak Spanish and it was a good experience for him. So he, anyway, he used that. But yeah, there's a lot of missions, right? A lot Most of time. missions. And we all have a mission, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I lean or Judy. Thanks. Thanks, Billy. I lean Judy or Mary. Any I was. I was going to say that um, if you believe uh, that our thoughts and our choices we have here on earth, um, you could choose to die any time. Or like you said, you can choose those things that help you live better because you're healthier. But um, I also wanted to say that I don't think of death as death, but a time to transition to another dimension. And so I don't think it, about it. Okay, I'm gone forever now. I'm living in another place. Yeah. 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 I, I'm, um, so I'm, I'm just recollecting an experience I had, which I, I'm going to share. I, I waited in. Uh, way back when. Before I was a minister, I was living in Clearwater, Florida in a condominium complex. And uh, we had tennis courts in front of the complex. And I was playing doubles with uh, a couple and uh, another woman. And I don't know how many games we had played, but the husband of my friend just fell down on the tennis court. Uh, and was unresponsive. And so they called the ambulance right away and the ambulance came and I stood, I stood back and watched. They were trying to resuscitate him and <clears throat> they were doing it while he was laying on the ground for a while. And then they put him in the ambulance. And as the ambulance pulled out of the driveway and started down the road, I could see this was 
like a doorway for me. I could see uh, a white energy come out of the top of the ambulance. Wow. And I knew he had died. Wow. And he did. He did. So when we think about soul, I think about our essence, mm -hmm. our essence. This body is a home for right. our essence. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, onward. Are we ready for this one? The power of habits create our character and our destiny. So he was talking about the power of habits. Uh, he has lots of stories in the book too that are pretty good, huh? Tom? Mm -hmm. Uh, what habits could lead to you living your best life? Being aware of other people. Good. Staying in good health. Good health. Great. Practicing the presence. <laughs> Say that again. Practicing the presence. Practicing the presence. <laughs> Great. Not worrying. Not worrying. Letting go. Letting go, you're cooking. <laughs> Diane. Uh, for me, it's meditation. Meditation. Uh, you know, because back to that other question we were talking about, um, death is the ultimate mystery. I yeah. think it's the ultimate doorway. And if we've been raised, which I was with those hideous nuns, um, <laughs> to believe that we're going to hell or something horrible is going to happen, we have to work really hard to change that thinking, at least I have, I and mean, most of my Catholic friends have. And that comes out of, for me, meditation and, and a habit to start believing something different yeah. instead of what was ingrained um, in a small child. Brilliant, brilliant. Create a new thought. Yeah, create a new thought, right? Yeah. Uh, you said something else. What was it? It'll come back to me. The great mystery. Uh, anyone else on what habits lead you to living your best life now? Yes, yeah. I know what it is. Let me guess. <laughs> Winning at the slots. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like to feel that I can send out love and feel mm -hmm. the peace. But you know, where does it go? But then I think about that butterfly. Yes. And I think about life and send out love and mm -hmm. that feeling like that. It will go out to the world and to people maybe that need it or maybe somebody around the world will feel it. It will. Mm -hmm. It will. I mean, science is really proving that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that our thoughts affect matter. Mm -hmm. And just like our thoughts affect this body matter. Uh, our thoughts go out from us because they're energy. So every loving thought we send out makes a difference. So I have a question. When you're dealing with someone pretty evil and bad, as you know I am, do we have power over those people with positive thoughts and energy? Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever set a good example for you? Oh, constant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's your so, I mean, we can't. What if this person is not paying attention? Well, <laughs> that's their choice. <laughs> you can't. I mean, here's here's the point. The point is not I have to change this person. The point is maybe I can make a difference. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. But it also helps me. If I think I can't get through to that person, that doesn't help me. Mm -hmm. If I think my positive thoughts can make a difference, I can't guarantee it and I can't make it happen. That mm -hmm. is beyond my control. But every good thought I think is good energy. So if it doesn't affect this person now, it may or it may or it affect something like else. Or safe for now. John. Okay, uh, what habits could be to you living your best life? I, I can say habit, because, you know, I've, I've taken quite a bit of spiritual learning and all kinds of stuff. And the, to me, the more foremost thing is like the simple thing, the golden rule, okay? We don't have to get too complicated here. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. You know, Jesus told us to love, love thy neighbor as thyself. And every major religion has those kinds of thoughts in them, every one of them. 
Okay, so it's nothing unique to Christianity that Jesus thought of that. And that, that really is the essence of it, teaching us to take, play better in the sandbox of life and treat other people. That gives us joy and happiness, whether we like it or not. If we treat other people with respect, dignity, and love, we get it back and we fulfill the best that we can in terms of joy and happiness in this lifetime. So it all comes down to character and conduct and the golden rule, in my humble estimation. <laughs> Thank you. Well put. Thank you. Good one. Um, anybody out there in the ethers? It's hot. Hey, Kath, it's hot in here. People you see, are I just having a hot flash. No, I agree. It's it's oh, okay. It is. I yeah, think I never know if it's hot or not. No, it's not okay. Uh, <laughs> Judy, Eileen, <laughs> Mary. Mary, I <laughs> I'm actually here. Sorry, Reverend Sharon. I, I come from a swim class, so I'm trying to pull myself together here. So, um, but I have nothing to add right now, but I'll probably be off the screen. Okay, great. But I'm here. I'm here. Good, good. Okay, great. Eileen or Judy, any comments at this point? No. Okay. I'm moving on. Uh, someone read this for us. Thank you, Sam. Can you see it okay? Sure. Okay. We can harness the awareness of death to appreciate that we are alive. And curious self-exploration self to clarify <laughs> our values, find meaning, and to generate positive action. Mm -hmm. And my question then is, how is that so or not for you? And remember to speak in the first person, I. We can harness the awareness of death. Awareness, like not morbid, just an appreciation of now. Appreciate that we are alive to encourage self exploration, to clarify our values. So, it, you know, it really is important to take time to reflect on what really matters, right? That, our stage in life, mm -hmm. uh, to find meaning. And so a good reflection for me is, you know, what am I making this mean? What gives my life meaning? Tomorrow morning, I am getting on a flight to San Diego because it's my son's birthday tomorrow. That's what has meaning for me, doing something like that. I'm coming back Friday, but I'm going to be there for his birthday. So to, it's, it's, it's a wonderful and I think enhancing reflection on what gives my life meaning. So anyone want to comment on that? Darlene? I think for me, the um, what gives my life meaning is being of service and also trying to to do things to show that I care about other people. And um, and going back to the one that we just did too, I think um, what I'm going through now um, is allowing me to develop even more of an understanding of myself and my actions and my thoughts and of the dying process. Um, and I don't know, I, I, I worked with adolescents as a counselor for 37 years. And I'm wondering if maybe this is training me to, to work with um, uh, hospice. Um, yeah. You know, it just, uh, because I don't, I don't fear death. I, I don't think I ever have. Um, not that I want to die, you know, anytime soon, but I, I don't feel, fear it. I feel like life goes on. And I think that I can help be a service of people who maybe haven't got to that point yet. Great, great. So for the benefit of those who don't know, what are you going through now that is preparing you sort of or inviting you? Oh, well, my husband is in hospice. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Who else? Can I say something quickly? Please, John. If I take the first thought, 
awareness of death, and then the last thought to generate positive action. That tells me I need sense of urgency for the time I've got. Yeah. And so I better I better not be just a wallflower just <laughs> looking at everything. I better make something happen because there's a finite amount of time I've got this uh, time to live to make things happen, the positive action. Right, you know? right. And you did that the other day. Huh? Yes. You did that the other day. Right. I tried to. You yeah. did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Is it Mary? Oh, it right. is Mary, yes. Yes. Um, I, I was trying to think of this as the opposite of what we're talking about, if if there was no death. Like that helped me kind of focus a little bit on what I think. So if there was no death, how would I, I live my life? And I think there would be a little bit more of just like wandering around. Mm -hmm. And the fact that um, when you have an awareness of death, it gives you more of a focus or gives me, I should say, it gives me more of a focus. Um, and I think younger, I kind of did some of that wandering because death wasn't really much of a reality. I realized everybody died, but it, as a young person, I think I thought somehow I was gonna dodge that. But, um, but if I look at it the opposite of there would be no death, it really helps me see how you do focus your life. Great. There is an awareness of death. And, and I think this, this is a gift to me today because it's, it, it's a gentleness of death, awareness of death. It's not the drama of it. It's more of how it helps me live my life and focus my life. Well said, thank you, thank you. Eileen? I have been con contemplating my life and death a lot recently because I lost my brother a few months ago and I have to speak at his celebration of life next month. And so it has caused me to look not only at my life, but at his life and the things that I can speak about him of who he was. Um, the interesting thing about my brother is even though he was very spiritual inside, he doesn't want any prayers or any religion or anything to do with dogma spoken at his celebration. And so it's been quite a challenge for me to look at my beliefs, um, even though I think that he has a lot of the same beliefs I do. He just didn't want to um, call it that. <laughs> and he was a wonderful, kind man. And traveled the world over and uh, really, I think had a great understanding of all the different peoples of the world and their um, beliefs and so forth. And so it's, it's really caused me to take a, a look at life in general and uh, those things that we bring in to others, even if we don't uh, speak them out loud. Great, thank you, thank you. Big job speaking yeah. at his memorial service. Very privilege, it's a great privilege. Mm -hmm. Okay, are we ready to move on? Mm -hmm. You know what I think? I think it's time to stand up. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's still hot in here, Kat. I know you adjusted it, but uh, the eyes are going half hands here, so. Do we have some sugar up here? Some sugar and water and salt. I'm afraid if you're going to freeze you out, I'm down to 75. Is that right? I think it's all this Maybe it proves I am. 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 Maybe it proves I am.
I'm here, isn't it? It's, it's because I'm in the corner. Okay, here we go. No one got any sugar or salt. What's up? For those of you who showed up late, could I just ask that you be sure to put your contact information on the form and the baskets where we put our love offering? Which form, Kath? Right there. Oh, this one? Can we pass the basket around again? Yeah, pass the basket around again. We can get it. Oh. Um, John, did you say? I don't have any John to You don't know me. Uh, <laughs> well, this is right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, this is I said I went to an AA meeting. It's not all. It's anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is cold over there, isn't it? But it may not be as real cold. It's cold over there. Yeah, but it may not be as real cold. It's cold over there. It's cold over there. It's cold over there. It's cold over there. Uh, we can warm it up a little bit. It's kind of cold up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's 79 in here. So you're right. If I were home, 81 here with all these hot air. Reverend Sharon, Reverend Sharon, yes. um, I just like to mention that the sound is so much better today. I don't know whether you have a better microphone or if it's turned up better, or if it's because I have a new computer, one or the other. <laughs> we, can, we got we can, new mics, Eileen. Oh yeah, we can hear you very clear today. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually too loud on my computer. Mac asked me to turn down your volume. <laughs> okay. Oh. And this is my dog, this is my dog Cleo. Uh, okay, so you know, so far, remember, we've been into the first invitation, don't wait. So these quotes are really pointing to don't wait. Did you get that? Okay. Oh, and would you give it back to, to Darlene? She didn't of course. That. Okay, thank you. Okay, so any comments before I move on? And what we've done so far. This is not in the book, but I love it. Uh, follow your bliss, and the universe will open doors where there were only walls. Mm -hmm. Joseph Campbell. Follow your bliss, and the universe will open doors where there were only walls. Have you had that experience? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, share. I mean, somebody, somebody say something, Billy. <laughs> oh, well, okay. <laughs> I had a project that I, I wanted, a vision. Um, and I had a hard time communicating it to the people I was working with. So um, I, I felt like it was a constant trying to engage them in the vision. People are, that I encountered seemed to be only could see this far. They couldn't see the horizon at all. So um, it was, uh, it took me five years to do this. But once it got to a critical spot, there were people showed up. Mm -hmm. For instance, one of the um, representatives from our area got interested. And here he is. And I, I, had this sense to go go talk to him, and the doors just opened. Wow! Because it was so important that you know I was open, and things just happened, and so it did. It did get accomplished. And then people would say to me afterward, "Well, I know you talked about that a lot, but 
I didn't really know what you were saying. <laughs> I didn't really understand. Once they could see it, they understood it. Yeah. Yes, all that. But, you know, and so I was just amazed that at, at some point, once I had stayed with it and kept working on it, once it got to a certain point, it was just doors, open doors. Well, and the other interesting thing about that that I, I want to point to is that once it got to that critical point, so whereas the universe will open doors if we're persistent yes. in following our bliss, yes, mm -hmm. where it looks like there are walls, yes. I think the persistence, that in fact, people started to call me persistence. Which <laughs> 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 is fine. I was like, oh. But it really, yeah, it, it's not magical. It's, you know, you make, you, you stay with it. Yes. And that's, that's why bliss or what makes us happy is so important to pay attention to mm -hmm. and move on because it gives us the power to persist when it matters a lot. We have all the power we need because it, it's, I want to say it's divine inspiration. Our bliss is divine inspiration, mm -hmm. even though it's going to the uh, casino. <laughs> John? I, I gotta throw, my mother had a beautiful expression for just about every situation in life. <laughs> this one, she would say, smile and the whole world smiles with you, cry and you cry alone, mm -hmm. because this is exactly what that's saying. I mean, when you're in that joyous, euphoric frame of mind, you go out and see things that are magical, that are dull and mundane to you when you're in a negative frame of mind. And that's what this is talking about. So, I mean, I, I, I've had that euphoria. And, I, and every time that I'm, I'm in that state where it just seems like everything is beautiful, that expression my mother told me comes back back to me. And I, it doesn't come back to me so much when I'm in that dour, mundane, morose frame of mind, but it does when I'm when experiencing all that joy and I see beauty in, in stuff that I just pass by uh, in a normal frame of mind. So yeah, bliss is a wonderful thing. Bliss is a wonderful Joy, thing. joy is where it's at. I'll tell you what. <laughs> hey, mom, thank you. <laughs> else followed their bliss and don't worry is following bliss i have had experiences where doors opened to my benefit i kind of knew i wanted it but i didn't think it was possible so i wasn't dwelling i wasn't praying for it but all of a sudden the telephone rang and this is like oh my god and I've had this happen to me a lot. And it's, it's called, and I used to have this, or knew this expression called unconsciously competent. Mm. So I don't know, is there, you know, so that leads me to believe that is there a plan for our lives when we come here? Do we make it up as we go along? I don't know. I, I don't know where, I don't know where unity is on that, that feeling. Well, we're going to hear about it right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, you know, the universe or God, whatever you want, um, opens doors for us. And we have to choose whether we walk through or we don't. And that, that tells us what our life is going to be like. And sometimes we don't want to do something, okay? Then another door will open. I, I think we're always have a choice yeah and and it was something i wanted to do but i didn't think i could or i was capable of mm -hmm. so there had to be when his door opened there had to be a couple of other things taken care of <laughs> in order for me to go through it and i did it was the best thing i did in my whole life mm -hmm. so that so that led me to believe well somebody maybe somebody has a better plan for me than i have or a bigger plan or and then I started to, that made me start to recognize opportunities. And yeah, then there was a choice, but most of the time, it, I'd say 99% of the time, <clears throat> it was absolutely in my best interest. So I thought, hmm, maybe there is 
somebody looking out for me, you know. So I mean, it really kind of changed my whole thought process. So yeah, it was kind of interesting. And yeah. maybe there's someone in you looking out for you. Someone in me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone in me. Huh. Diane, guardian <laughs> angels. I, I've had them my whole life. Good. I'm looking at this and I'm realizing the number of times I've walked into the wall <laughs> and then about the door. You know, yeah. it doesn't always go with that door. It's still mm -hmm. right there. But yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think lots of times we're in the hallway. <laughs> yeah. 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 Is that Ellen Devonport's book? Hell yeah. in the hallway. Right. Oh no. Oh, the the door. Something. Yeah. 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 Uh, the hallway is. Um, a doorway, yeah, right. Doors all over the place. Mm -hmm. in the hallway. That's the hard part. Which door to go through? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes, yeah, yeah. So, um, my experience with coming to Unity is that a friend of mine um, took us to a Unity church, and I had not been in church for so many years because I grew up with a fundamentalist church, and I rejected it totally. And I said, well, I'm going to be a, you know, whatever. And she took us to a Unity and really liked it. And so when we came here, we looked for a Unity church. And, and when I came here, I felt like this is my home. Mm -hmm. So your heart said, this is it. I know this is it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, someone asked, where's Unity on, is there a plan for our lives? Uh, that's biblical, actually. God has a plan for your life, and it's a good one. Philippians 1 4. I hope, and that's one of my very favorite Bible quotes. God has a plan for my life, and it's a good one. But I always have free choice. Mm -hmm. I always get to choose. Right. I think and the plan is always, I mean, when you think <clears throat> that. Um, it's all energy and our work is really forming energy into action or outcomes so i take the love energy in me and i form it into making a reservation at south best to go to san diego and i go I take the energy of strength and I get a book written. You know what I mean? So our life is about taking this energy that is all possibility. It's all possibility. And I, I personally want God's will, not mine, because mine can be... <laughs> We should not the best. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm seeking God's will. And, to the, and that's why when Diane mentioned meditation, I wanted to make a plug for the meditation tonight and at the end of the month. Tonight, uh, Emily brings, I don't know how many bowls, Tibetan bowls and crystal bowls. And, and it's a, med a sound meditation. And uh, it's, I think of those crystal bowls and Tibetan bowls as calibrating our energies. So there's a sound of the universe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are sacred sounds, which is why some music sounds better than others. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, you know, I think I've told you guys, I tone to myself on the way to work every morning or wherever I'm going, I tone, because I believe there are sacred sounds that calibrate the energies of our bodies. So I'm getting a little off track here, but, uh, but there's all to say. So tonight the meditation is, is uh, really a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the end of the month, we have a meditation. So Deepak Chopra, you know, all know who he is, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's written numerous, in numerous ways about when you meditate, you can get in that minute gap between thoughts. And that's where the magic happens. That's where divine input works. Mm -hmm. 
I have to put a plug in for his soul of healing um, because it, it has all those vibrational things that you're talking about on different chants. It is the best CD of his that I've got. Uh, it, and, and I remember when I was uh, at Unity Village Chapel, when I was a minister at Unity Village, uh, I brought to the church, the congregation, um, let me think of his name, Mitchell Gaynor, Dr. Mitchell Gaynor, who, I mean, I don't know if he's still practicing a few years back, was a, an oncologist at Columbia University. And he, I learned through a friend of mine that he was using crystal bowls with his terminal, with his cancer patients uh, as a healing technique. And, you know, first we heal at the cell, you know, the soul level and then the cellular level. So anyway, there's something to do about sound mm -hmm. that is good for us all over. Anything else on following your bliss? Walking into walls, walking through doors. <laughs> okay. Y'all doing okay? Okay, mm -hmm. I need someone to read this one. Marla? Whatever we have done with our lives makes us what we are when we die, and everything, absolutely everything counts. Woo! Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> 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 and so what do you see other than we know what joy sees uh, what do you see about that for yourself straighten up and fly right that's true. say that again say. better straighten up and fly right <laughs> I better straighten up and fly right it's never too late uh, what else I hope there's a balance there, you know, to where the other things that I've done balances out the good things, you know? Yes. Just hopefully. <laughs> it does, of course. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we, we can reprogram our consciousness, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So any false ideas can be erased. Mm -hmm. But I think the good news, too, is that we're talking about a God of love and Jesus is teaching love and because they are love basically we're not going to you know they're not going to be judging us but we may carry over some learning experiences into the next incarnation just because I believe in that that's not everybody but um so we don't have to be fearful but we we can live the best life we can. And if we haven't, we can change our minds. Mm -hmm. We can do better. Well, and um, Kathy had to leave, but remember Kathy said, I want to send love to this person who is a dark mm -hmm. energy in her life. And will that change him? Well, maybe, maybe not, but everything counts. So mm -hmm. it matters that you're doing that. Right. Mm -hmm. It changes you, 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 you may not know that it matters to him, but definitely you can know that it matters to you. Mm -hmm. So in that way, everything counts. And in 12-step programs, uh, you know, the, the practice is if I make a mistake, I can make an amend. Mm -hmm. I can make up for that. I can transform the energy into something positive. Okay, how about anything else on this? Eileen, Judy, Mary? No? All right. One more, and then we've had enough for the day, right? Okay. We'll read this one. Embracing the truth that all things inevitably must end encourages, encourages us not to wait in order to begin each moment in a manner that is deeply engaged. On a scale of one to 10, how engaged are you in your life? Why do you say that? Yes. <laughs> On a scale of one to 10, how engaged are you in your life? 
And what makes you say number five or six or seven mm -hmm. or one? Can you can you be engaged physically and not mentally? <laughs> Or just do they go together? Think about it. Yeah, I am. And I and I think <laughs> sometimes I'm not mentally engaged, but I'm there, you know? Mm -hmm. So so man is deeply engaged. I think you need both at the same time, probably. Right? Did I yeah. say that a lot? <laughs> say it a lot. Say it a lot. Yeah, you know, right. Yeah. You know the hokey pokey, right? Mm -hmm. Oh there. Yeah. So what's the last line? That's what it's all about. That's it's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I think about my life, I think about and our lives, I think about my relationships, all my relationships. I have a relationship with my plants. I have a relationship with my puppy. I have a relationship with my car. I have a relationship with my kids, my congregation, everyone sitting. I feel connected. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I have relationships. I have a relationship with my body. Mm -hmm. Is it a good one? I love my body a lot. I take good care of it. I ate that cupcake last night. I knew it would not. But it was a lot of sugar. <laughs> uh, so considering, considering that's that everything is a relationship. Life is all about relationship. Mm -hmm. We either have one or we don't. With this and that, you you are in a relationship right now, right? How engaged are you right now? Are you kind of in or sick of your borderline, huh? <laughs> okay, comments? No, is this a engaged, bad topic? How engaged are you in life? Well, I'm 91 years old, but I ride the bike to stay active. I read the paper every day to be aware of what's going on. I do the crossword puzzles with the paper. I play games on the computer, time so that I can see if I can do better every day. And I think that's being engaged. It is. Mm -hmm. I still like to study. <laughs> Exercise your Rereading the uh, conversation with God. Oh, great. Which was a great book. And I mean, the one I have is all three books. And so I'm rereading that. And I just think that that's being engaged. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. great. 91. Yeah. Bravo. <laughs> You're older than me. Chad? <laughs> uh, you know, this is a parameter that is solely your ownership. You know, whether you're 91 and doing all the stuff you, you just rattled off, I mean, that's great. And you may think that's engaged. Whereas that guy, 91, he's sitting home watching Fox News and he said, man, I'm happy, I'm engaged. You know, it's a very much a self thing. It's not for other people to judge. You know, if you're satisfied that you're, that that stuff you rattle off constitutes full engagement, then you're there, you're where you need to be. But like I say, you know, I, I am I totally full in? I think I'm pretty engaged, pretty high, you know, an eight or nine. But am I fulfilled? No, I'm sitting here for a reason. I must want something else. So yeah, I'm seeking something better. So you know what you're seeking and how engaged. So it's very engaged. You could say that guy watching Fox News. I'm sure there's guys that think that is where it's at. Okay, and they're engaged. That's all they want, and that's their life. So they're you know whatever. Jeff, be careful. We'll get passionate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't sit too close. <laughs> I'm looking back as we speak. <laughs> I've heard that before. I bet. Chris, and I think this goes back to the one I was thinking on the uh, the previous one 
is finding your bliss. Yes. So Absolutely. each one, yeah, everybody has a different bliss. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where it, that comes in too. Absolutely. Yes. It's your passion. Mm -hmm. So and engaged is connecting, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I plug myself in to something. Is and one of, the, one of the things I think <laughs> that uh, I've had trouble with, and I'm sure a lot of other people have had trouble with, is, gosh, how do you find your bliss? How do you find your joy? What is it, you know, and, and the only way to do that, I think, is, is through, you know, helping others, helping yourself, and, you know, uh, Maybe deciding on different things that bring you joy. You know, and that's the whole thing. Joy. We know what brings you joy. Well, I I I like helping people. So I know you can, you know, so that's um, how many of you are familiar with the Enneagram? So the Enneagram is one of those personality assessment tools. Mm -hmm. That and and all those assessment tools help us understand ourselves. And other people. And so the Enneagram assigns a number as, as your primary way to engage with the world. And one of them is serving others. One of the numbers is two, and it's serving others. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a two. There may be other twos in this room. But there are other, like, what's my first thought, or what's my first priority, or what's what is my bliss, right? Mm -hmm. What is what brings me peace and joy? Mm -hmm. And we're all all of those numbers, but there is one way that we most joyfully engage with the world. So you might wonder what that is. How do you find this? Um, is it what, what you're talking about? Is that written or is it in a book? Or there are books about it. I'm sure there's a book here. I think we have a book here. I bet there's a book here in the library. Oh, I bet there is. It's online too. For me, the Enneagram said it's, we're all we're all a little different, yeah. and there mm -hmm. is no right or wrong. No, right. and uh, and so it it allows you to accept yourself, but it also allows you to accept other people. Yes, mm -hmm. who do things entirely differently, who see the world differently. Even. Exactly, mm -hmm. and so just knowing there's not one right or wrong way is right. helpful to me. There's no, I you know, who am I to say what's right? Exactly. exactly. We know what's right for us. That's all. we have to if decide we're lucky. what's right. Yeah, we've done our work, I guess. Yeah. 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 Well, this was fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had fun too. Yeah, I forgot to do a little bit. Well, I can thank you all for being engaged. <laughs> for the most part. So we're all on the ten anyway. Yes. How about you online? Any final words or something? <laughs> Hang on, hang on, Joy. Joy. Eileen? Um, my final word is um, thanks for doing this on Zoom again with gas prices. It's hard for me to get over there two or three times a week. And so I'm really appreciative of having Zoom today. Eileen lives in Chandler. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, Mary, thank you for joining us today. Great to have you. And Dee, thank you for venturing in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to all my loved ones, thank you for being here. And um, we have, I think we have time if you're really uh, succinct to uh, do a prayer request. So uh, let me start with Joe and then we'll close. Thank prayer you. request. What I want to request. Yeah, what do you want me to what do you want us to hold in prayer for you? Oh, I've got to get a kitty and I haven't had one for a long time. So I pray that we get along wonderfully. Carly? I pray for my daughter to keep on keeping on. Oh good. What's her name? Amy. Amy. 
My kitty's name is Mango. Is <laughs> Mango? Mango. How cute is that? It's an orange kitty. See? Uh -huh. <laughs> my prayer request is for my oldest sister who I've recently uh, talked to. She's been depressed and, and she's thinking about moving from Missouri back here to Arizona where she used to live. Oh, great. What's her name? Donna. My prayer request is for my friend Donna, who's not feeling well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Margie? Just peace. Peace? Yeah. Marla? For my mom. She's 92 and is having a lot of health issues and she's oh. in a facility. What's her name? Maxine. I think mine would be that people become more compassionate towards one another. Praying for all the young people. Young people? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, my prayer would be to support family healing. Sam? Understanding. My understanding is well as others. Really? Um, <clears throat> I, I would like a prayer for the people of Ukraine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I second that. I'll go to Ukraine. Chris? Um, my daughter, John. Donna? John. John? <laughs> and for my son, Eddie, healing. I don't want to make you, I want to thank you again for Sunday. A couple of weeks ago, when you prayed for a spiritual experience for Putin and so he would change his. Yes. Mm -hmm. was I never even good. thought about that. And that has been really strong in my father that you did that. Mm -hmm. Pray for him. I said that. That is mean. so moving. We appreciate it. Uh, I think. My prayer is for Carol for healing from her surgery yesterday. Judy? My prayer is for you and Kathy and your support team to continue doing your excellent work. Nice, huh, Kath? <laughs> Kathy? For Mac. Her the healing, perfect healing of her knee and her foot, her needs and foot. Mary? My prayer is for compassion in American political life. Great. Great prayers. Okay, let's pause and pray. Spirit of the living God, we give thanks, knowing that as we have spoken our prayers into your everywhere present energy of love and life, wisdom, understanding, strength, power, passion, order, creativity, and faith, we give thanks that your will for good to be manifest in every way, in every request, is unfolding now in perfect divine order. That even now, the substance of your presence of good is forming to fulfill our request. We give thanks for the blessings of this time. We give thanks that Ukraine is divinely protected, that the dome of your love is covering the country, that 
Russian soldiers are being inspired to feel compassion and love. And that Alexander Vladimir Putin experiences the love that you are within him and in all people. And his heart is open to peace. We pray this now, knowing that it's unfolding, and so it is. And we all say, thank you, God, and amen. 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 Thank you all for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be here.